Bad Ideas, the show where we look at misfires, mistakes, and miscalculations from all throughout history. I'm Tony Southcott. And I'm Albert Berg, and today's episode is going to be delivered by Tony. Tony, what's the bad idea that we're learning about today? Today we're going to be talking about Mary Toft and her strange ability to give birth to rabbits. Oh, I've heard this story. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tony, remember why? What I said, remember Tony. when I said last week things were going to get weird? I remember the week before that when you subjected me to anal fistulas. Well, that was a few weeks ago. We did payday loads after that. I that was pretty pretty standard. What? It was gross, but not that gross. I know where this is going, <laughs> and I hate it. I'm just going to put a little preface out there first. This is a family-friendly show, but if you are unable to take that someone has possibly given birth and done things to put rabbits inside them and you don't want to hear about that, then this might not be the episode for you. In the market town of Godalming, during the 1720s, a young couple scraped together a meager living as clothiers. Mary Toff was a mother of three in a town that was little more than the modern equivalent of a two-stoplight town on a trucking route. People saw all of the wonderful and interesting things heading to London, but they really didn't get to partake. It was a boring life that was very arduous and just never really seemed like they could catch a break. She lived a very drab life, and it was the life of an 18th century peasant. One day, while working the fields, she began to have complications to a pregnancy. When she miscarried, she claimed that some of the bits looked much more animal than human. Also, that there were parts that were as big as her arm. It's already gross. It's all... No. We haven't even gotten into the intentional stuff yet. Well, this part will come back later, and it's not, it's not good. She showed these bits to her her mother-in-law, who was a midwife, who immediately sent them to a surgeon and man midwife named John Howard. He initially dismissed Mary, but whenever he went to her the next day, he witnessed as she delivered three legs of a cat of a tabby color and one leg of a rabbit. This is a quote from him. Three legs of a cat, tabby in color, and one leg of a rabbit. The guts were as a cat's, and in them were three pieces of backbone of an eel. The cat's feet supposed were formed in her imagination from a cat she was fond that slept in her bed at night. Basically, he's saying that he thinks because she was fond of these animals, it imparted their characteristics onto the would-be baby, and she was able to give birth to that. I mean, I'm glad that he's saying that and not the other thing that he could have been saying about her having a cat sleeping in her bed and then giving birth to cat pieces. Yeah, they're... I'm sure there's people who probably thought that, those that are a little more involved in animal husbandry and so on. So just to recap, Mary Toft is claiming that if she is thinking of a certain type of animal, she can birth it. Or parts of it. She really hasn't stuck the landing yet and given birth to anything alive. Now, this is related to something that people kind of still believe today, at least some people, that if you are pregnant, you can meditate on certain things and potentially influence the type of baby that you're going to have. If you go to a bunch of art museums, you're maybe more likely to have an artist. Or if you eat a bunch of really nice food, maybe you'll be more likely to have a chef. I mean, potentially, if you are inclined to eat a bunch of nice food, you might genetically be more inclined to have somebody who's also interested in nice food. But I don't think it's a causal yeah, it's called maternal impressioning. Yes. And I don't think I've ever seen anything that actually makes that work, but who knows? I'm not an obstetrician. I mean, if it makes you feel better, you get through nine months of having another human growing in you, I'm not, I, I won't take it away from you. Like, if you wanted to listen to Mozart and try to give them the best possible experience, that's, that's good on you. It's not going to hurt him. It's not going to turn him into a rabbit, though, either. Yeah, you're not going to make, like, Ninja Turtles if you focus really hard. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a Buckwild origin story for a superhero? <laughs> Maternal impressioning gone so deep that her friend the tortoise and her new baby are one. Oh, no. That just sounds like a really sharp birthing. You'd really hope that that would be a cesarean. Well, when they're babies, they have pliable shells. It's fine. That's true, thankfully. Thankfully for all of those human mothers giving birth to turtles. <laughs> well, a lot of these rabbits and everything had sharp claws, so I'm sure that wasn't fun. Mm. Words started to spread quickly, especially when Mary began to deliver whole rabbits on an almost daily basis. Even members of the royal court were starting to notice. This was at least in part because John Howard was writing letters like this to other surgeons. 
One of them said, Sir, since I wrote you, I have taken or delivered the poor woman of three more rabbits, all three half-grown, one of them a dun rabbit. The least leaped 23 hours in the uterus before it died. As soon as the 11th rabbit was taken away, up leaped the 12th rabbit, which is now leaping. If you have any curious person that is pleased to come, Post may see another leap in her uterus, and shall take it from her if she pleases, which will be great satisfaction to the curious. If she had been with child, she has but 10 days more to go, so I do not know how many rabbits may be behind. I have brought the woman to Guildford for better convenience. So at this point, they basically just set her up so a bunch of physicians can start taking a look at her. I mean, (laughs) yes, the other way to interpret that letter is, hey, come take a look at this woman's junk. It's given birth to rabbits. (laughs) It's it's pretty wild. You want to see? You want to come see this woman and her? It is the 1720s. I'm sure people were starved for entertainment, and a story as salacious as that would probably get a lot of people out of their houses. I guess. The royal family became so interested in this that they sent a renowned surgeon and the Secretary of Wales to investigate. Upon arrival, Toff was immediately able to produce a rabbit torso and a rabbit head later in the day. Probably some cat parts too, but no one could really tell. They concluded that the rabbits were being made in the fallopian tubes, since she didn't seem to be carrying them in the uterus. Uh, Yeah, that's the conclusion. That was the conclusion. They're like, well, she's not carrying them in the uterus. And... It must actually be happening biologically because who would who would try to fake this with all that that entails? So it must be coming from the fallopian tubes. Yep, there's no other way it could be done. Seratius Allers was a surgeon sent directly by the king. He believed that this was a hoax and intended to prove that Mary Toft was a fraud. Initially, upon meeting her, he told her that he believed her story and wanted to witness all of this being done. He noticed that Mary was squeezing her legs in a way that seemed like she was trying to hold or hide something, rather than just giving birth. He also found it highly suspicious that John Howard would not let him assist. While Seratius might not have been a midwife, he still presided over many births. He was an experienced surgeon, enough that he was actually one of the royal surgeons. I'm thankful there's somebody in this story that's not a complete moron, where he's showing up and he's like, no. No, the, this lady is not giving birth to rabbits, okay? I also like that he's just playing along for a while, just to make sure that he's like he's seeing it from their perspective and trying to... He's trying to give it a shot if there is something there. Well, he's also giving them enough rope to hang themselves with. This guy seems real sharp to me, compared to everybody else in this story, anyway. Him and a few others in this story are going to be sharp ones. Others just went whole hog on this and kind of staked their careers on it a little bit. It's never a good idea to stake your career on the lady giving birth to cats. Once again, Cyrusius pretended to believe Toft and Howard, claiming that they had found a strange anomaly of nature. Really, he had noticed that there were straw in the bellies of some of the rabbits, as well as uh, that in the, uh, in the gore and a few rabbit pellets. It's not something you would exactly find in the womb if this was legit. Howard, on the other hand, suspected that some of these physicians were starting to have doubts, so he began to collect written affidavits from townspeople, saying that they had directly witnessed the birth of rabbits. And also, he got them to witness uh, her pushing out a pig's bladder. He released this pamphlet trying to discredit Cyratius and various other physicians that were starting to suspect something was up. Do we find out in this story if Howard knows or if he's a complete moron? I think that he knows, and there's going to be more reasons for that later, but I don't think it's ever explicitly stated, like at least not in the literature I was reading. I'm just trying to figure out, like, I know that this is a fake, Everybody who's listening to this knows that this can't possibly happen. I don't know what Howard has it in for himself. I I mean, I'm not saying there can't be anything that he has it in for himself, but I don't understand the economy of the time well enough to get what he would do with being the guy who was the doctor for the lady that gave birth to rabbits. Like, can he get a book deal? Will he there were be... definitely some books being written about this, but I don't believe any of them ended up ha- bearing his name other than in the infamy of the pages. Okay. Maybe he gets, like, a better deal. He gets to move up to a more substantial, interesting gig as a doctor or as a midwife. I know that there was a Swedish physician that was heavily involved in this, and he was one of the ones that actually brought this to the king. 
So he wanted to be able to move up with both his prestige as a politician and as a doctor. So he wanted to be one of the guys that initially broke this news and he was putting out papers on how it was legitimate before everything goes crashing down later. As I'm, I, as we know that it will. I, I mean, I, spoilers, I guess, for the how your story is going to go, but... Um, it's it's bad ideas. Guys. If anybody thinks that, they're, that they're, she's actually birthing rabbits, you haven't been paying attention to this series very much. Or... Like, biology? If I actually saw somebody give birth to a rabbit, I would be impressed and alarmed. It was at this point that it hit local papers and became a nationwide sensation. Everybody wanted to know more. People seemed to range from happy curiosity to believing that Mary should be executed for witchcraft. People were very widely different in their beliefs, but most of them believed that this was actually happening because many physicians were signing off on it. This is an era of relative ignorance compared to our time today. I'm not going to bag on the people of the day. It was like, you know, maybe they can read if they're really lucky and they hear that some lady's given birth to cats and that all the doctors in the land are saying, yeah, this is legit. Uh, those people And are... to be fair, if somebody put this on Facebook, there would still be a fair amount of people actually believing it right now. Eh, maybe. Probably, probably the percentage would be lower. Yeah, it would it be much lower, time. but I would, st I could still see people sharing this and be like, can you believe this miracle? Et cetera, et cetera. They'd probably blame 5G for it. As a strange side effect, people stopped eating rabbits as much for a time, like rabbit stew and like pickled rabbit and so on, just kind of went off the menu for a little bit. What, because people were afraid that they were going to get rabbit pregnant? Accidentally? I think it was more that they started to see them as possibly like a holy sign. They, oh. I, I didn't I didn't fully get a testimonial from a person on this. It was just one oh, of the yeah. notes that I read in a couple different things. More doctors flocked to see this phenomenon. John Mowbray, a Scottish physician, proposed that she was giving birth to the Studerkin, which is a small furry creature about the size of a mouse. He also believed in maternal impression, where strong psychic forces can mold a pregnancy into whatever the person wills it to be. Or it could happen in dreams. He even believed being overly fond of household pets could cause babies to look more like the animals. So that would be why your child looks a little bit more like the milkman rather than your husband is because the milkman looks a little more like your dog. You know, things like that. Uh-huh. Now we get into another one of these people that was actually skeptical of this, a man named James Douglas who was a well-respected anatomist, physician, and man midwife. And he believed that the woman giving birth to rabbits was about as likely as a rabbit giving birth to a human. Under his supervision, which this is the biggest guy that they've sent so far, like this is the guy directly from the king, and he was not able to watch her actually give birth to any of these rabbits. Every time she tried, she just wailed and moaned and thrashed around but was not actually able to give birth in his presence. This is when the investigation around Toft actually went up too. And it didn't take long for them to ask a guard about it and found that the guard had been bribed by several hundred pounds to keep bringing rabbits to Mary in this sort of isolated cottage. Her sister-in-law had been delivering rabbits to the guard and that guard had been taking them uh, to her in the middle of the night. But why, Tony? The mystery is just too impenetrable. How will we ever unravel this tangle of misunderstandings about this woman who's definitely giving birth to rabbits? Maybe he's bringing it so that she can think about the rabbits more. That makes sense. For several days, she tried to say that. She said that first off, it was just for food because she was hungry. And second off, she wanted them like uh, they want. She wanted them close so she could do this sort of maternal, she wanted to do this sort of imprinting, and eventually she would confess that it was entirely just made up from the beginning. And it started out whenever she had a certain person, who I believe was Howard, but it didn't explicitly state it, take advantage of her miscarriage. Ah! Mm. No! Yeah. I yeah. don't understand how she didn't die of infection with all this. They don't make them like they used to, I guess. There, there's something very... Like, she rolled a 20 on her constitution or something like that, because how did she not die with a dead cat inside of her? This is, this is the alternate... This is the alternate take to when people talk about how great 
people were back in the day like, yeah, George Washington, he was a surveyor <laughs> at age 17. Why aren't you doing like that, you lazy bum? Yeah, yeah, well, most women today probably couldn't survive this, and that's fine. <laughs> because they shouldn't try. That's mm. actually a line in the Minority Report whenever uh, Tom Cruise gets his eyes replaced by uh, the doctor. He's like, I have you on so many antibiotics, I could sew a dead cat in your chest and you'd be just fine. It's like, ugh, I never thought I'd actually see somebody trying to do that. Let's so back up. The story is, she actually does miscarry, which is tragic. And the, yes. the top of all the other awful things that are happening in this story. And someone says, hey, you know what? We could get some stuff up in there since all of that's open right now. Anyway, what about a cat? And yeah. she's like, yeah, cool. I guess. And her entire family was complicit with it. Her husband was buying the rabbits. Her sister-in-law was bribing people. Like, it was just an effort for them to be able to pull off a hoax. Can we go back to <laughs> Balloon Boy? Remember that? Remember when nobody had dead animals coming out of them for a hoax? Yeah. This is a different time. This is a harder time. Even though she did have a miscarriage and she was in a very, very hard emotional state... It's still such a leap to get to where she got with it. It's so weird. She said that the reason why she focused in on rabbits was because she was startled by a rabbit, and that was right whenever the miscarriage started, so she became kind of fixated and obsessed with rabbits. I mean, there's obsession, and then there's this, and I don't... Mm, that's, uh... That's, that's, that's a horse of a different color, in my opinion. It's like this is almost on the level of like postpartum psychosis or something like that to, to think that this is a good idea. And we don't really have enough data to know exactly why this other party, beyond wanting to create a hoax and I guess leverage. Well, I think they thought that they could themselves. cash in on it. I think yeah. that they thought there'd be books. They thought that this would be something where like she set up and she just gives birth to rabbits and people would come and see and like want to like purchase these rabbits, especially if they would survive. Because apparently some of them were alive. They said that you could feel them moving inside of her like she's pregnant. But, you know, that's kind of a suffocating thing to do to a, a small rabbit. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine that that would be a problem on top of all the other problems that are caused in this story. There are so many problems. Toft would be arrested under the under a charge that they basically wrote down as for being an abominable cheat and imposter pretending to be delivered of several monstrous births. Ultimately, she would be sent to prison for about four months. Uh, but since the Toft family didn't make any money off this hoax and they didn't have any laws on the books on how to deal with somebody who did this, they just ended up releasing her. But she did spend four four months in a really, really bad prison. Talking about the person who gets the rule written about their specific situation. This yeah, one's... Like it, <laughs> it's like that person that wasn't that made it so it's illegal to have a goldfish on a bus in North Carolina. Like, there's got to be some very, very specific rules written about this now. I hope it wasn't a Mary Toft type incident with the goldfish yes. in the bus. <laughs> I'm hoping it was something like an assault where somebody threw the bag at somebody and that's like the end of it. But who knows? John Howard, the midwife that would assist her in the beginning on the other hand was sued and he would owe the state 800 pounds which in today's money is about hundred and twenty thousand dollars so that's a pretty well, hefty fine for his involvement in this good i'm glad i was worried that it was just gonna be mary toft who got you know dinged for it but i'm glad howard is also getting his comeuppance yeah, because he was the one that lended credibility to this, being that he was a midwife and physician after this the medical profession was lambasted by the media even though they probably made a lot of money off of this, but the credibility was shattered and the public trusted them less than ever. Being that most of the cures in this time period were made up, it probably didn't have that much of an impact on society, but it still made people assess if they were going to believe in physicians or not. The motivations of Mary Toft aren't well known. Most believe it was a combination of boredom, wanting to be noticed, and trying to escape poverty. We know that she couldn't handle the fame and the pressure, that her body probably couldn't handle many more dead animals inside of it. Unfortunately for her, she never found the wealth that she sought. We're talking about her almost 300 years after the fact, so something worked. I mean, it was gross. Like, on, on t you already had plenty to talk about when you thought that she was actually giving birth to rabbits. When the word got out that this was intentional, 
you can't, you don't stop that kind of a story from getting out and people talking about it. Yeah, you're still going to have plenty to report on. I will be remembering this incident for the rest of my life. Uh, There's not, there's not going to come a time when I'm 80 and I'm going to be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that woman that put (laughs) rabbits up inside of her. And there, there are more viv- there are more vivid descriptions of how all this went down out there. I just wanted to make this as family friendly as shoving rabbits inside you can be. So I was a little bit less uh, graphic than some of the descriptions I've seen. I can't wait to see the thumbnail you come up for this episode, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> There's a wonderful yeah. painting that might work perfectly. All right. There's also a bunch of woodcuts of this incident, so we'll uh we'll see what i come up with i think that's gonna do it for this bad idea if you guys know of any other medical anomalies such as this go to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash bad ideas go to this video and put them in the comments and we might end up having to research them we'll make al do it so he has to look at all the pictures tony loves the gross medical stuff i don't hardly ever end up doing (laughs) gross medical stuff i don't think it's true i'll get a bunch of comments about all the gross medical ones i've done that i've forgotten about somehow but I don't feel like that's true today, Tony. You win this one. (laughs) Yours was a much more inspiring story, though. Yes, last week's episode was much nicer and uplifting about the human condition. That's the great thing about humanity, though, Tony. It goes (laughs) as far in either direction as you can possibly imagine. (laughs) Exactly. Anyway, thank you all for listening to this. If you enjoyed it. Please throw us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this if they allow reviews. Tell a friend, and we hope that you have an excellent, excellent week. Bye, guys!